we had this national conservatism conference yesterday and also today. One of the people speaking, you might know from Channel 4's um, Britain's Strictest Headmistress is the name of the series, Catherine Burble Singh. This is what she said at the lectern yesterday. So why do I need to throw all of you into detention? Because you haven't been paying enough attention to the fact that our nation's culture is not only created in our schools, but that it is our children who are leading the development of that culture in our schools. Adult authority is long gone. So here I am, ringing the alarm. In 20 years, many of us will be retired or sadly dead. And the children in our schools will be in important and influential positions in our institutions. As G.K. Chesterton said, the true soldier fights not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. Well, I'm asking, how much do you love your country? How much do you love the values that you claim to defend? Do you love them enough to tweet under your own name? Do you love them enough to change your child's school to one that's less woke and ignore the impact on your social status? Do you love them enough to do more than simply chat to your friends who already agree with you at dinner parties? For heaven's sake, man, stand up and be counted. As Russell Crowe says in the film Gladiator, a clip I regularly play for my staff, hold the line, stay with me. What we do in life echoes in eternity. Will your life echo hollow? with cowardly hypocrisy, or will it echo with courage, valiance, and honour? The choice is yours. Strength and honour be with you all. Now get yourselves to detention. She's uh, brilliant, <laughs> isn't yeah. she? Well, Round of applause. Um, what, a, what a refreshing to hear that, rather than the, the garbage you get from the, 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 me the, emotional the union that. leaders who just seem to want to be on strike the whole does time. Does it make you emotional, Tonya? It really does. And, I, and having worked as a primary school teacher for eight years, I know that there are very few head teachers like her. Yeah. Mm. She, is, she is a complete diamond. She's, she's the type of person that would make me want to go back to teaching yeah. Yeah. because teaching has become so alien to me now. She's, she's, try, she's right, it's true. They're brainwashing our children, OK? The, the teaching that, the, that our children are getting in schools at the moment is brainwashing. From a young age, from primary ages, they're being told that a woman isn't a woman and, and that, you know, we're, in a, we're about, all about to die because of climate, don't you understand, instilling this fear, this madness, this mental health illness, as far as I'm concerned, into our children. And she stood up for them there. She's fearless, Nigel, and you never see that. No, I, I mean, I think she's terribly impressive. It's just when you see something like that is, I don't quite know what she's getting at. Really? Um, really? Yeah, on the basis oh. that when she's talking about if, if you, you think your school is woke, take your children out of it, mm -hmm. isn't the most important thing that your child is happy at school and getting a good education, not about whether or not it might be a bit woke or something like that. Well, that's that. one clip of the whole speech, and what she's really representing is she's saying if you want to stop this change that you may not like, you're going to have to be brave about it because the forces of change are so strong mm -hmm. in terms of a little bit about the gender politics, but it's just about the general permissiveness that the children are in charge in the classroom and the teachers have to feel empowered to, like she says, to hold the line, to be strong wrong to be disciplined with children that's what i think she's partly getting but that's about good teaching isn't it i mean we've all you know we all remember our best teachers at yeah. school the ones yeah. the ones that actually inspired us they'd all get uh, sacked now Nigel, they'd all get sacked now. They'd because. all get oh, because they you're mm. too firm, affecting someone's mental health, not speaking like that. I no mean, boundaries. The, the, there's no boundaries at all in school. The manners have gone. The discipline has gone. I've, I've be, I work. I worked in education. We would all get sacked now. Yeah, if I've, your teachers kept that firm line now, they the couldn't good have teachers it. Shout Often good teachers shouted at us. Yes. They wouldn't be allowed to now, would they? No, not, not allowed to, not to point out someone that's being lazy or just being lazy. I mean, oh gosh, the amount of times I had teachers saying to me, you know, you are just lazy. You are a lazy child. You better get on yeah. with it. And were they, they were right? Absolutely right. Yeah. I was really lazy, and that's yeah. why I need. I couldn't say that now. Yeah. Nigel, you're looking bemused. Well, I am what's bit, happening because, in schools. I mean, uh, that, uh, as far as I can gather, I mean, I haven't, uh, I haven't worked, uh, worked in schools, but I do know an awful lot of teachers, um, and I can still pick out the ones who are the good ones, the inspirational ones, the ones who are going to work with the, the kids. And when you talk to kids, they, they actually set out one teacher. It's not about shouting at kids or anything like that. Um, it's actually about being... It's, it's an instinctive thing. You either, you know, you are a good teacher or you're not. Um, and I'm 
I'm not sure that particularly has changed over the years. I think what has changed over the years is the lack of leadership, really strong leadership within schools, because teachers now are often worried about upsetting the parents as much as upsetting the children. Mm -hmm. I think there's this, there's, hasn't there been a shift in that, you know, when, when we were younger... You're not taking him with you. He look, he, no, he's, he's, just not there, he's just not with you. I think, well, when we were younger, I think if, 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 if a child misbehaved, the parent would come in and say to the teacher, what have they done, tell me. Mm -hmm. Now, if a child misbehaves, the parents go in and say to the teacher, what have you done to my child? I had exactly yeah. that experience. Yeah, I mean... But, but, I had exactly that experience. And that's what I think Catherine Burgle's really? thing is yeah. talking about. That's, I had exactly that experience. So when I was a child, I would be so fearful of them telling my mother. Yeah, yeah. My mother would, would reap yeah. much harsher punishment than the school ever could on me. Yeah. When I told off certain children, um, well, I had complaints about me that I was picking on poor Billy or, or mm. whatever, you know, because I was being firm, because Billy was a rude little <laughs> thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I constantly had to tell him off and tell him to be polite and, and watch his manners or send him out of the class, whatever. And I got, uh, the parents would come in, it happened on more than one occasion, the parents would come in and say, oh, they're picking on my boy. Their boy was vile. Mm. Yeah, yeah.